with us tonight uh, closing the show, doing his brand new ball routine with video accompaniment, is Luke Burridge. Give it up, guys. In 2003, I set myself a goal for the year to create and perform six juggling routines, all with various numbers of balls. I thought I'd start in the obvious place with a three ball routine, and I wanted the three ball routine to be about three ball juggling. To be honest, I'd been reading about postmodernism and postmodern art, and I wanted to apply that to juggling. I'd seen the Gandinis performing their piece with sight swaps and saying the numbers of throws. Uh, it was art about the subject of the art itself, self referentiality being a big part of postmodernism, and this routine is a great example of that. But I thought I could push it further. This was before Wikipedia existed, but if you look up postmodern art now, you can see some other things that I thought I could apply to a juggling act. Conceptual art and multimedia, particularly involving video. So that's a good start. Uh, the use of text prominently as a central artistic element. Sounds good. How about the words appearing on a video? I plan to perform the routine for the first time at the British Juggling Convention in 2003 in Brighton. So I picked um, a music track called Not From Brighton by Fatboy Slim, who happened to live in Brighton. I also wanted the routine to be based around what I thought of as building blocks of three ball juggling. So patterns and repetition, not individual tricks. I found that not sticking to the strict tempo required of rigorous sights, what meant that I could make tricks switch from left hand to right hand, uh, the cross in the routine actually has a sight swap value of four, but is thrown to the other hand. And because I was intentionally being postmodern, beginning with the 441 uh, was me acknowledging the Gandini act as the inspiration right at the start, and a knowledgeable audience would be able to get that too. So I made the choreography and then used video editing program to uh, make a karaoke style display of text. I ran that off onto a VHS tape and I performed the routine for the first time at the Birmingham University Juggling Convention in 2003. The act was an instant hit, meaning that I got more good feedback about that routine than anything else I'd previously performed. The reaction was so strong that it was the first time I ever considered myself good enough to be a professional juggler because performing for a living isn't just about being good at juggling but actually having a good show and this was it. Uh, maybe it shouldn't have been a surprise. The juggling acts I tried previously didn't have the pinpoint focus of this one. Having a goal of the routine not being based on tricks, instead being an experiment in postmodern art, means that even falling short in terms of the juggling, like dropping a few times, means that the story of the act carries through. But there was still work to do. I wanted to push the postmodernism even further. In Brighton, after I performed the original routine on the Renegade stage, I came back up to show a video of me juggling the whole routine, and then held flashcards with the words on, saying the words into the microphone and commenting on the juggling. How many Dan Divas did it take to show tonight, boys? Three, three, four, four. This routine really only made sense because the audience had just seen me perform the original 20 minutes before, but it was a fun gag. My real goal was to perform the original routine dropless at least once and then retire the act. Uh, to be honest, it was annoying to always find televisions to set up on stage. On the sixth performance that I did at the Crawley Juggling Convention in 2003, late that year, I got through with no drops and thought that was it. You know, I still had another three ball juggling acts to finish by the end of the year. Except that wasn't it. I still liked the juggling in the routine itself and I'd put in a lot of effort into being able to do those tricks in that order without dropping. But I didn't want to always have to have a TV on stage with me and the act was too long and a bit too repetitive anyway. I cut the choreography down to the best bits and wrote a new piece of music to the appropriate length. A juggling act rarely needs to be longer than two minutes and with it this short I could combine it with other routines and not outstay my welcome on stage. I performed the juggling to the new music a few times without the TV on stage, but I wasn't happy with it. It had lost focus of being a juggling act about the juggling act itself. Now it was just a three ball routine set to music. I wanted the names of the tricks still to be involved, so I recorded a version of the music with a vocal track, me saying what had previously appeared on the video. This version with the narration on the audio track became the final section of an act I called Pick Up 2004, which started with club juggling and had a one to nine ball section in the middle. I performed this throughout the summer of 2004, including my first ever time being the final act of a national juggling convention show at the NJF 2004, the last act of the last open stage at the EJC that year, and an appearance at the IGA Summer Festival, which earned me the People's Choice Award that year. In smaller shows, I also performed it after a routine where I got tangled up in my coat. One time at the Shine Bar in Berlin, when it came to the three ball section, the sound technician 
said, the CD is broken. I thought that would ruin the performance, but then I said, well, I'll do it without the music. Cross, imagine the music. <laughs> and it was kind of better when I said the words instead of relying on the backing track. I could play around a bit more, make comments to the audience about what was going on, and extend out the front cross, back cross part until the end became funny. And if I made a drop, I could have another go or make a joke about it rather than rushing on to whatever the music had reached by that point. Cross, front cross, back cross, front cross, cross, front cross, back cross, cross, back cross, front cross, back cross, front cross, cross, front cross, back cross, front cross, back cross, front cross, back cross, front cross. So this became one of the ways I would regularly perform it, except that I'd stumbled back into the same presentation of the juggling as the Gandini jugglers did years before. I was just standing on stage with no music, saying the throws as I did them. It had become no more postmodern than the original inspiration. In 2004 and 2005, I had also worked on lots of other acts which combined juggling and video, sometimes on TV and sometimes with a projector. I loved that mix of juggling, uh, which is one of the most live kind of performance where any mistake or any changes breaks everything, in video, which is the opposite of live performance, where there's never any changes once you press play. And because I had a projector screen from another act, I used it to make a version that had been in my head for ages. For Nottingham Juggling Convention in 2005, I performed a routine where I played combat against myself, and I also had a joke where I threw a club to myself, and then I had this three ball and video routine, as it is most recognisable today. And I made all of those videos in just about four days, with lots of filming and lots of editing. I also like this version better because there wasn't a split focus. I really like split focus in some of my postmodern juggling acts. It came back in the art of juggling where the audience could either watch the juggling or the live performance painting. But now the words followed the path of the balls. Add in the music, saying the words and the juggling, this was finally the level of postmodern self-referential video performance art with which I could truly be happy and satisfied. It was short, punchy, fun, and had as many layers as the audience could comfortably follow, but no more. Now a comment I've heard a few times is, well this is good for jugglers, but it can't work for non-jugglers, right? Well that's wrong. Non-jugglers love this routine. It's the part of my show which to this day gets the most comments and praise. However, for it to have the full impact, I can't rely on the existing knowledge of the audience. Jugglers already know the words and the numbers and what they mean, so it clicks right away. But non-jugglers need a bit of help. So when I started performing this on cruise ships, I wrote an introduction. It's not a true story, but it's based on my real experience of learning three ball tricks when I was about 13 years old. The higher the number, the higher the foam. The lower the number, the lower the foam. So a one is down here, and a five is all the way up there. Is this making sense for everyone, yes? By putting myself in the role of someone ignorant, learning the names of the tricks for the first time, I bring the audience along on that journey from the position they are in right now. And he showed me his new trick again, but this time he didn't just show it to me. He said it to me, he said, Luke, the trick that I showed you before was called the 441 came in behind the back catch cross four squeeze. And so it clicked in my mind and I knew from that moment on, three ball juggling was going to become a big part of my life as a juggler. Not all theatres have large central screens which are big enough to stand in front of and juggle. So I made a version of the video most like the original act as well. Just the words appearing on the screen. This can also work in small shows where I'm playing the video on my laptop screen on a table beside me. The last thing I changed was the choreography. One trick was just too hard and didn't really have the visual impact needed to justify its place in the routine. It's the back, back, forward, 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 back, cross bit. And I did it three times in the show. That's three chances to mess it up. Every time I approached that one trick in the routine, I had to tense up, knowing that this was the place in the whole act I was most likely to drop. And that tension would be the thing that made me drop anyway, not the blind catches. I should have known it wasn't that consistent, as I even dropped there in the very first ever performance. In any other act, I'd have cut the trick or swapped it for a different trick way earlier, except in this act, to change the choreography also means re-editing the video, and that's a pain. Especially if, like in the case of this act, I switched between different video editing software over the years. I think, in total, I've made new versions of this video from scratch five or six times. 
So in 2013 or 2014, I took out the hard trick segment and replaced it with some body juggling tricks, bouncing the balls off my arms and legs and head. This fits with the overall story of my complete theatre show, even if it breaks with the original concept of only using blocks of juggling patterns and not individual juggling tricks. I shouldn't have worried about it though, as nobody noticed the change. Actually, the only person to ever both notice this change and ask me about it was Wes Peden when we performed in the same show in 2016. Now I perform this act on every cruise contract I do, and almost every time I'm invited to a convention to perform. It's a super strong opening to a show, especially if I'm hosting. It also works great on open stages or renegade shows. So that's all I have to say about the history of my three ball and video juggling act. And I think it goes to show that if you create a juggling routine or a juggling act with a clear goal in mind, a clear story that you want to tell. In this case, I wanted to experiment with how far I could push postmodernism in juggling. You can get a routine and an act which you can still be performing on stage 15 years later. Drop, drop, drop. See you later.